Hello everyone and welcome to the video companion for the Talking Time Let's Play for Final Fantasy XIV. I'm McDole and today we're tackling a mission requested by the house, High House of Zamayo, Zamayo Darkhold. As you might guess for the unusual position in the story, this dungeon isn't required to complete the main story. It's optional, much like Cutter's Cry in Halatali. However, it is required to promote all of the sergeant ranks of the Grand Company, and with that comes with some very nice perks. In addition to that, while Sazen Suisse has had dealt with three of the four high houses of Ishgard, she's had very few dealings with House Zamile, as that was taken care of by our friend Lord Orchafon of House Fortant. House Zamile started working on this labyrinth of caves to serve as a stronghold against the Dravanian Horde, akin to something like Helm's Deep in the Lord of the Rings for the civilian refugees. This plan does make sense if the Horde ever attacked Ishgard directly. However, while they were working on this, they discovered an entrance to the void, the space in between dimensions, and a lot of void creatures came pouring out of it. So Sats and Suisse has been tasked with clearing the place of void scent. Throughout this whole first chunk of the dungeon, you're going to be menaced by an invincible void scent foe, the all-seeing eye, an enemy reminiscent of the Ar Aramon type enemies from past Final Fantasy games. When it approaches, the party will use a skill called Eyes on Me that will damage the whole group unless they are standing in the light of the crystals that are positioned all throughout this first area. As you're heading down, you'll see one of these Magitech terminals requiring a player to stand in the ring in order to disable a lock on the door. This will force a player to stand in a dangerous spot while the invincible all-saying eye is patrolling the corridors and blasting out Eyes on Me. This fir the first one is an optional one and you don't need to go into the door into the Chocobo stables to finish the dungeon. Most parties will not. Later, Magitech locks will be disabled, however. And if you're extremely insane like my party here, you'll just pull the entire first batch of enemies into this one area and destroy them. It is possible for a part coordinated party to start the dungeon from the, from the beginning all the way down to this final lock. As long as they are careful with their cooldowns. Beyond the terminal locks is the chamber of the all-seeing eyes boss fight. Finally, you can deal with this obnoxious thing and bring an end to it. Generally, you're going to want to hang out inside the crystal veil areas in blue to prevent the eyes on me damage that has been so pervasive. It will be used while you're actively fighting this thing. Tanks, when they drag the eye into the crystal veils, will make the eye vulnerable. This does take its toll on the crystals and eventually their power will wane, forcing the tank to pull the eye to another crystal to continue the fight. All the while, the eye will be summoning adds that the tank will need to pick up if only to keep the damage from spreading around the whole party, making the healer's life miserable. Otherwise, the only other things of note are a couple tricks from the eye. A conal attack that will cause either paralysis or amnesia. Amnesia will knock off your off-global cooldown skills, making it more annoying to deal with. It can be deadly if the tank cannot use defensive cooldowns to mitigate damage. Beyond this transporter, we come to a very volatile, corrupted crystal that is highly charged with void energy. Periodically, this charge will overload and detonate, damaging any poor souls who happen to be nearby. So steer clear of these crystals, as they're going to be a regular feature for the rest of the dungeon. This area can be very dangerous, as there's a terraced cliff section connected by inconvenient ramps. If you're not careful, you could accidentally wander off from the cliff and fall into a pile of dangerous enemies, aggro those, and get killed by them. And these enemies will then climb up and get around, up and around to get at your party, making this whole situation a cascading mess. Just keep along the upper level, go around this curved crystal deposit, head down the ramp, and keep an eye out on your left for the tunnel. The tunnel is the way forward.
At the end of this tunnel is, a cha is the chamber for the second boss, Towler. He is honestly barely worth talking about, though he does have some deep void slaves that appear all around the elevated platforms along the wall to throw rocks and fireballs that cause circular AoEs. Keep spread out to avoid baiting AoEs onto your allies. The slaves can't be targeted, so just keep focus on killing Towler and the ads will vanish with him. For he himself, he just has a few forward and backward facing conal AoE attacks that are easily baited away from the party. This final chamber combines the joyful mechanics of the first two areas before the boss, the Magitek terminal locks, which each of which are conveniently inside the AoE explosion circles of the Corrupted Crystals. Healers, just throw a regen effect or damage shield onto whoever draws the short straw to open the terminal locks. There are also roaming skeleton enemies. Basically, you'll just want to pull all of them together and use AoE to damage all of these enemies down. A recommendation that you're not seeing happen right now is to pull the enemies such that the that the three soul enemies that you see in the far away from the batch of enemies are all bunched together and then pull the melee enemies toward the souls so that way you can get all of the enemies in one area of effect. However, our tank died so that would mean that life is a little terrible. So I switched to Earth, uh, Fists of Earth stance to increase my defense to reduce the burden on the healer. Through the final hallway, we come to the final boss of Zemail Darkhold and the commander of the Void Scent here, the Demon Batral. It's a pretty nasty sword combo that will come out with no warning, so tanks will need to protect themselves with the mitigation at their disposal. It'll also damage all players between standing around him as well. Periodically, a beam of energy will tether Batral to a corrupted crystal in the area, and he'll start ignoring the aggro table, with one player being attacked aggressively. The other players will need to attack and destroy the corrupted crystal to break the tether, as the tether makes him immune to damage. Whoever he locks onto will be targeted by large beams of void energy that will kill, likely kill anyone who get hit, gets hit by it. As long as you're diligent about clearing the crystals and maximizing your damage against Patrol while he's vulnerable, you should only have about two cycles of invulnerability.
And that'll do it for this video. I thank you very much for watching. For Please check out the full LP in the description below. And may you ever walk in the light of the crystal.